Hi everyone, I'm going to make a video on how to analyze SSH packets on the network when somebody is trying to crack your password. So I'm going to analyze two different situations. The first one is when somebody is cracking a user in your computer and you want to find if they actually found your password, only looking at the packets. And then we are going to look at the situation when we want to know if they actually use that password to access our accounts and to type commands. So in this setup we have a user test with password test. Uh, I'm going to start Wireshack in my bootback interface and I will not use as a filter port 22. That means that I will only capture packets going to and from port 22 in my network. So I will start capturing here and I will also filter the packets belonging, belonging to the SSH protocol, okay? So I don't want to see all the TCP packets for setting up the connection. I just want the packets specifically for the SSH protocol. So if I just log into my computer, uh, you will see that I can use the user test in localhost and I can put any fake password. You can see that we already have some bucket in here, right? This is for the SSH protocol trying to establish a connection. And here you can see both the client and the server versions. So if I put just any password in here, you will see that SSH is trying to connect. So these two packets here is my connection attempt. And uh, I can try again another fake password and you will see that there are also two more packets in here for the, my fail attempt. And um, my last third attempt, will, I will put any password also and you will find that after the connection closes, we have some packets belonging to all my attempts. But this is not a cracking, right? This is just me trying to log in. So I will mark this packet in Wireshark with Ctrl M. You will see it as a black background and white font. So you know where we stop our last capture. And I will now try to use the Hydra program to crack my password of the user test. So see Hydra here, I'm telling, hey Hydra, just use one thread, do not parallelize this attempt. The user is the user test, read the password from the file passwords.txt, it's the SSH protocol in my localhost server. Actually, uh, I will show you the passwords file, and these are all failed passwords. So these passwords are not of the test user. Okay? I just want to show you how the traffic looks like when the password is not correct. So I will execute this Hydra there. You can see there are no more packets in the network yet. So I will start this Hydra and you will see that there are some packets in here. Actually, you will see again the connection to my server. In this case, the client is lib SSH. That means it's not a human typing, but it's some automatic program using a library and you will see that there is a key exchange some diffie hellman packets a protocol and from now on from this packet new keys we have the attempts so in this case we know there are four passwords and we can see the length of the encrypted packets so this ssh encrypted packets they have lengths 52 68 84 68 and like that in this case, remember that Hydra is not having the correct password. So I will mark also the last packet with Ctrl M, so you can see there the last packet. And now I will add the correct password just in the middle. The test is the correct password. And I will use Hydra again to crack my own account and we will see the differences. So I will start Hydra, I will go to the packets. And you can see there that there is also the Diffie Hellman exchange, the new packets are going, everything is working. But at some point after the new keys packet, we have the 
52 length packet, 68, 84, and the last one is a 36 bytes packet. So this is specifically of how, how Hydra is working. If you use another program like Medusa, you will find another length. But this packet, the packet with length 36, means that Hydra found a correct password in my machine. Right? If you go back to Hydra, it's saying yes, actually in your host, the login user test, we found the password test again. So I will repeat the first experiment, trying Hydra without the correct password. So you see this is consistent. I will erase the test password from the file and I will use Hydra again before I will mark the last packet. So you know that we finish there and I will start Hydra and Hydra won't be able to find the password and if we see the packets we will find that there is no packet with 36 bytes in length, the encrypted length. So this is the first way how you can differentiate if some client using Hydra actually found the password of your user or not. So going to our other question, we now want to know if they actually use the password to access to our computer and type commands. So for this, we are going to also mark the last packet in the Wireshark, so we know from now on this is what we want to see. And I will show you how this looks like when I actually log in to the computer. So as I said, use our test, local host, and the first password I will try is test, right? So now I successfully log in to my computer, and if in this moment you go to the packets, you will see that there are some key exchange, the new keys, there are some packets in here. Some of them actually look larger, like 108, 100, and 452. This may give you an indication that something is going on, 940 bytes, but anyway, the key is that if you connect, uh, if you continue typing in SSH, look at what's going on in the network. So I will mark the last packet, okay, that's the last packet we, uh, we saw, and if I type the, the letter, only one letter, L, do not press enter, just one letter, you will see two packets in there. That means that the letter went to the SSH server and came back to the client, right? So I will mark the packet again, the last packet, I will type another letter, and you will see that there are two more packets in there. That means that each letter you type in SSH is being sent using its own packet, right? So I will press enter now, there is nothing, nothing in that there folder, so you won't see nothing, that's okay. There are three packets now, one for my, my enter and then the response. And anyway, if I do a larger command, like something like this, for example, you will see more information being exchanged. And actually, this is what you see in the packet in the network a lot of letters and then information going back and forward, even larger packets. So, in summary, we can infer, this is not precise, this is not correct, this is not part of the SSH protocol, but you can say that if you have more than, more than this amount of packets in the network, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11 or 12 packets as encrypted packets, if you, hope, if you have more than 12 encrypted packets, you can start trying to think that maybe somebody actually log in to your SSH. Actually, if you see these small packets, you can recognize that sometimes, or um, yes, uh, this may be somebody typing in your SSH account. Uh, uh, another nice way of looking at this is if you look at the I.O. graph. So in this case, you may find that the packets corresponding to the typing letters in SSH may have some timing difference, some separation. That means that actually there was a human typing here and it was just not somebody 
uh, copying or, or using an automatic program, right? Like for example, if I create a file and I just type something, hi, how are you? I want to type something here for you to see. Um, maybe something more, right? So this is gonna show that when you go to the network and you analyze the graph there are there are there are there are some time difference between those packets and that's also an indication that somebody may be typing in your computer there we go so here we have some indications a lot of packets going on right I want to see this with more more precision in there. So there are some packets in here and you can see that there are some timing between the keys I was pressing. So this this is all I want to show you. I hope you, you get it more clear. Um, these are not reliable tests but there are some indicators you can use to analyze SSH packets.